So the meta study was a phase three, uh, mm -hmm. randomized to look at activity of cabozantinib compared with everolimus in previously treated patients with TKI. Uh, patients were clear cell histology patients who had failed one or more than one TKI before entering the study. They could have received a PD-1 antibody, could have received cytokines, they could also have uh, previously treated brain meds, which is quite different from other studies, and they were randomized between cabozantinib and everolimus at the one by one ratio. We had stratification factor based on prognostic factors and based on whether they had received one or more than one TKI. Primary endpoint of the CD was progression-free survival in the first 375 patients enrolled, and this was reported uh, in Vienna some months ago and published in the New England Journal of Medicine. It showed clearly that this drug, cabozantinib, improves PFS, response rate, and a good trend in overall survival compared with everolimus. That's what we, we recently published, and uh, what I've done in this meeting is to present an update of the study and present some subgroup analysis. So the first update we have done is to look at the progression-free survival and response rate in the overall patient population. So not only the 375, but 658 patients. And interestingly, the progression-free survival is very similar to the one we had previously reported, 7.4 months versus 3.9 months. Response rate was 17% by uh, independent review and 24%, which is very consistent which what we previously reported at ESM. Then we look at some subgroup, some subgroup of interest. Uh, we looked at uh, um, MSK series group, good, intermediate, and poor risk. Uh, I would say that cabozantinib is, is very active in all, sub, in all subgroup with a, probably a little more activity in good and intermediate risk group compared with everolimus. We look at performance status zero on O1, which was two uh, PS, which was accepted in the study. Numerically, the PFS is higher in PS0 patients than in PS1, but benefit over everolimus is very similar in both subgroup of patients. Then we look at some site of disease of interest. One of the site is bone meds because cabozantinib seems to, be, to have a specific tropism on bones. And patients with bone meds, either alone or with visceral meds, have a very strong improvement in PFS compared with everolimus. Hazard ratio is very, very interesting, 0.22 with bone meds. So very, very, very impressive here. We looked then at prior therapy. So we look at cytokines, at uh, uh, TKI received, sunitinib, pazopanib especially. The PFS with Sunity was 9.1 months, very impressive, uh, which was reported at ESMO. It's a little numerically lower with pazopanib, but still very significantly better than everolimus in uh, pazopanib treated patients. We also looked at one versus more than one TKI, once again very similar PFS, still uh, in favor of cabozantinib. And the last subgroup we look at was patients who had received prior immunotherapy, PD-1 or PDL-1. Not a very large group, but still 32 patients. And in this subgroup of patients, hazard ratio was 0.22, very, very strong in favor of cabozantinib, which certainly gives an idea that this drug will be active in patients who had received, as an example, nivolumab, which is becoming a standard of care in kidney cancer. So overall, I mean, very, very nice uh, subgroup analysis. All of them favor cabozantinib. Some interesting data on bone meds on prior immunotherapy.